Hello my dear friends, Namaskar. I know that e-verification is certainly not a new process to you. However, recently Central Board of Direct Taxes through a notification has made certain changes in e-verification process. What are these changes? How e-verification can be done? These are few important points which we are going to deal with through this video today. Now let me first put up or begin with CBDT notification number 5 of Lake 2022 dated 29th of July 22 which says that it has been decided that in respect of any electronic transmission of return data on or after the date this notification comes into effect, the time limit for e-verification or submission of ITRV shall now be 30 days from the date of transmitting oblique uploading the data of return of income electronically. Let me first begin with this point that the a forced notification shall be effective from 1st of August 2022, meaning thereby that effective this date, if you are filing your return, then you will be getting a time limit of 30 days only for e-verification of the return. Earlier, this time limit was 120 days. The impact of this reduction would be basically that the assessee needs to ensure that as soon as possible post filing the return, he or she is filing or ensuring e-verification of such return. Now, what could be probable reason for such reduction? My dear friends, in my opinion, Central Board of Direct Taxes uh, would be of the mind that in recent past, the time limit of completing a scrutiny assessment against an assessee has been significantly curtailed under Section 153 of Income Tax Law. So, because of that curtailment, the government is of the mind that if the returns are filed in time and they are e-verified properly because without e-verification of a return it is not a valid return which will be assumed or without verification it will not be assumed to be a return filed at all. So therefore if the e-verification or verification would complete soon the department would be able to complete the scrutiny assessment procedure also in a faster pace. This is probably one of the reasons. Now let me also say that the 120 days rule which you remember has not gone completely. That is for the assessment year 22-23 those who have filed their return up to 31st of July 2022 would get a time limit of verification of 120 days. But those who are filing effective 1st of August 2022 onwards they would get a 30 days time period only. But I can say assessment year 23-24 onwards, anybody who is filing return would get a time limit of 30 days only. But fortunately, those who have already filed by 31st of July, they are getting a period of 120 days as compared to those who will be filing 1st of August 2022 onwards. So it is clarified that where the return data is electronically transmitted before the date on which this notification comes into effect, the earlier time limit of 120 days would continue to apply in respect of such return. This is a very clear mandate given into this notification. This notification has two very important points which we must note. Number one, where the ITR data is electronically transmitted and e-verified or ITRV submitted within 30 days of transmission of data. In such cases, the date of transmitting the data electronically shall be considered as date of furnishing return of income. To put it simply, I may say, where as per the mandate of this notification, you do the verification or e-verification within 30 days prescribed period, your return will be treated to be valid or filed from the date on which you originally uploaded it on the site of income tax department. But second point is very important which says, where ITR data is electronically transmitted but e-verified or ITRV submitted beyond the time limit of 30 days of transmission of data. In such cases, the date of e-verification or ITRV submission shall be treated as the date of furnishing the return of income and all consequences of late filing of return under this act shall follow. This is very important and will have an impact. Say for an example, assessment year 23-24. Next year, say due date will be 31st of July 23 for most of the non-audit cases. Somebody who has filed his return on 31st of July 23 is supposed to verify it by 30th of August 23, but he or she verifies it say on 15th of September 23. Then what will happen? Rather than ITR assumed to be filed on 31st of July, it will be assumed to be filed on 15th of September 23. The impact of the same would be that it will be treated to be a belated return. 
so it will attract fees under section 234 f it will attract interest under section 234 a and it will also impact the losses with the assets he can carry forward so this will have serious consequences on the assessees secondly for the current assessment year 22-23 for which the assessees are filing return or have filed the return in audit cases where the due date of filing return would be 31st of October 22. If somebody uploaded the return but does not verify it within 30 days, then he, she or it has to face the consequence of this second clause which I have interpreted here. So this is very important for us to understand the impact of this second point. Now let me also quickly put up before you the e-verification window which you all must be aware about but if somebody is unaware or new to this procedure then that if you want to e-verify your return you have to go into your portal access your login there you will click at e-filing then you will click at income tax return in income tax return you will find these options here you have to click at e-verify return once you do this then you will find the other option to e-verify online. Let me also quickly put up before you what are the various modes of e-verification. Uh, moment you will click at e-verify, it will take you to the another window where it will ask you how do you want to e-verify your return. Number one, I would like to verify using OTP on mobile number registered with Aadhaar which most of us are adopting and where OTP on the Aadhaar is not active then you may obtain a digital signature certificate of yours made and you can use that DSC for e-verification of your return. Apart from this, you can also e-verify through EVC, which is allowed through an ad banking facility, through a bank account uh, related link or through a DMET link also. And where you already have EVC or you already have an OTP, you can click here for e-verification of the return. I would like to suggest that when as an SSE, your Aadhaar is not linked to the mobile or you are unable to trace which mobile is linked, you can go to the Aadhaar site and there you can find that with your Aadhaar number, which mobile number is attached and so that you are able to know that OTP is sent on which mobile number. I hope my dear friends this video would have been able to update you on the recent changes in e-verification time limits, the process of e-verification and this will also help you in ensuring that you timely e-verify your return for not only ensuring that return is filed but also ensuring that return is treated to be valid by the income tax department for further processing. Thank you. Wishing you all the best. Jai.